Praise the Lord tonight. Let's get ready to praise the Lord. Let's sing that song. There is no rock. There is no God like our God. Amen. Worship on Wednesday night. Let's give God the praise he deserves. And there is no rock. There is no God like our God. Yes, no other name. No other name worthy of all our praise. The rock. He's the rock of salvation that cannot be moved. Proving himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock and there is no God like God. There is no rock. There is no rock. There is no God like God. God. No other name. No other name worthy of all our praise. Yes, the rock of salvation. The rock of salvation that cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, and there is no God like us. Rock of ages, rock of ages. And Jesus is the rock, rock of ages. And Jesus is the rock, rock of ages. And Jesus is the rock. There is no rock, there is no God like us. One more time, there is no rock, there is no rock, there is no God like our God. Yes, no other name, and no other name worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation, he's the rock of salvation that cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock. There is no God like ours. Rock of ages, the rock of ages. And Jesus is the rock, rock of ages. Jesus is the rock, rock of ages. Jesus is the rock. There is no rock. There is no God like God. Amen. There's no God like Jesus tonight. He is worthy of praise and glory. Let's sing one of those old songs. Uh, goodbye, devil. And goodbye, devil, so long. I'm going with my Lord where I belong. Well, life's a different story. I'm on my way to glory. Goodbye, devil, so long. Hello, Jesus. Hello, Jesus. Hello. I'm going with my Lord where I belong. Well, life's a different story, and I'm on my way to glory. Hello, Jesus, hello. Goodbye, devil. Goodbye, devil, so long. And I'm going with my Lord where I belong. Well, life's a different story, and I'm on my way to glory. Goodbye, devil, so long. And he set me free, yes, he set me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. And I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Singing glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. And I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Singing glory to God, he said, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Hallelujah. Let's slow down. Amen. Let's sing out that song that we know. Jesus, lover of my soul. It's all about Jesus tonight as we give him glory. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, and I will never let you go. You've taken me from the mind. I love you. 
lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock. Now I know I love you, Lord, that I And I will worship you until the very end. Amen. Oh, look what Jesus has done for us. Amen. We're going to give him praise together. Father God, we love you tonight. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, I glorify you tonight. You are worthy of worship, worthy of praise, my God, worthy of honor, my God, tonight. Holy and awesome is my God. Oh, Jesus, thank you for the blood tonight on the cross. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. Amen. Let's take some time. And we're going to believe the Lord this evening and ask him to help us. We want to pray tonight, believing the Lord. Amen. I want to pray for my Uncle Stephen. He uh, had some uh, uh, kind of a heart surgery. And so I want to pray for him, just a complete recovery. If we can pray for him together tonight. Let's believe God. We want to pray tonight. A number of people have uh, gotten the coronavirus, obviously, um, but people that we know, pastors and, and, and people um, in surrounding areas. And so let's pray. Let's ask God to help us. Amen. We need a shield, a protection against this thing, and it's to be taken seriously. And so let's, let's pray and ask God to help us to fight. And even as a church, you know what, that we be patient. I know that online is not the best, but you know what, hey... <clears throat> We got to do what we got to do, and we got to be safe. And I want you to be safe. And so, let's pray and let's ask God to help us to navigate this, and for Him to open the windows of heaven. And so, let's pray out together, believing in the Lord this evening, and then we're going to ask Him to help us as uh, for the Word of God. Amen. Father God, we love you tonight. We thank you for the blood and for the cross. I give you thanks in Jesus' name, Lord. I come to you, God, humbly this evening, seeking divine grace. God, lift up those needs. God, I pray, God, for my uncle, God, healing, God, upon his life, God. And even though, God, that his soul will turn to you, God, wholeheartedly, God. In Jesus' name, God, I pray, God, we need revival. God, I pray for the backslider tonight. God, open their hearts, God, they turn to you. God, even this evening, Lord, I come, God, asking, God, for divine grace, God, to be given. God, do a miracle, God, even in our hearts and our lives tonight, God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hopefully, you all are doing well. Um, in this coronavirus lockdown and hopefully uh, God has been helping you and uh, we look forward to good things um, if you brought your if you have your Bibles and you want to know where I'm going to be preaching from tonight the book of Luke chapter 15 I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture and so but before that amen uh, remember you can give you can use Zelle it's uh, highly effective easy to do the door church upland at gmail.com and it goes directly to the church and we're able to pay our rent and so we haven't been we haven't had to miss any bills haven't had to miss our rent and so that's a wonderful thing um i know it's it's kind of frustrating because it's like you know but we're not even using our building why are we paying for it but you know uh, it is what it is man and you know what the man's going to get his money and you know but let's be faithful in our tithes and our offerings and and you would give uh amen and let god help you and so let's believe the lord for good things as you give god will help you god will bless you and so Tonight, amen, the title of my message is uh, The Cure for a Backsliding Heart. Amen. So I want to get into that. I'm not going to uh, give you the theology behind backsliding. And some people think you can't backsliding, but you can backslide. and You can go completely away from God and um, turn your back on Him. And although He never leaves you nor forsake you, never lets you go, amen, you can go away from God. And that's what this is about tonight because even in our hearts, even as believers and we love God and we want to serve God, there's times when we can grow cold, we can grow callous, we can grow uh, to a place where it's like, you know, we're, we, we may do it we, or like almost like if something is lost. And that's kind of what I want to get at tonight. And so I want to encourage you with this tonight 
the book of Luke chapter 15, uh, just totally simple, straightforward tonight for us to get our hearts back to the Lord. And so let's, let's read this text and then I'll, I'll preach uh, from it. The book of Luke chapter 15. It says, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. They're, they're drawing near to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes complain, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which he lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you, likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Let's, amen. Let that sink in. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep her house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls for her friends and neighbors, saying together, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journey to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living but when he had spent all there arose a severe famine in the land and he began to be in want then he went and joined himself to the citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the paws that the swine ate and no one gave him anything but when he came to himself amen he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose, came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had a compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. I will stop there. So this text, it's just good to read. And uh, what a wonderful text it is. Uh, because it's about, first, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's about when we first come to God, it's God receives us, but it's also about returning to God. In, in all the cases, it's, it's about returning. And so uh, even in... Um, so that's just so interesting because it's all about returning. It's coming back. And, and that's what it is for you and me, even as Christians, as we live for God. If we're honest about it, come on. There's times when it's almost like the fire goes out and it's like we need something. Like, God, where are you? What has happened to me? What is going on? And, and I, I'm telling you tonight that our hearts, even though we love God and we're saved, they tend to backslide. And so let's consider the conditions in backsliding because we have three cases. And first thing was the sheep. He was the sheep. And the Bible talks about us being sheep. And what happens to the sheep is the sheep simply loses his way. The shepherd leads the sheep. He goes out in front. He calls out his by voice. And who knows, but maybe the sheep stop listening to the voice of the shepherd maybe his ears got dull right the bible talks about that about you and me well, we can get dull of hearing when we don't want to hear sound doctrine and and you know later for it uh, uh, we can get dull of hearing we give our ears to other things except to the word of god and to uh, the preaching of the word of god and so we lose our hearing and that's how the sheep gets lost he doesn't hear the shepherd's voice anymore and so he gets lost. He gets sidetracked. He's not following the way that he should. 
And when he's not following the way that he should, he is in danger because for sheep there are wolves. There are predators who want to go out to get them and have them. For us, it's the devil. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Maybe that's where you're at tonight. It's, you know, you're, you're, you're not really uh, out doing what you used to do, but at the same time, you're not where you should be, and maybe it's because you're not hearing the shepherd's voice anymore. And the shepherd calls, and he cries out, and he looks for us, and anybody who has backslid, you know this. You know that God does not let you go your way peacefully. He seeks after you because he loves you. He chases after you because he wants to bring you home. Before you go too far. Losing your way. It's the sheep. Something had happened. They were grazing, they were walking along, but... All of a sudden, he stopped hearing the shepherd's voice. Now he finds himself lost. He's lost. Next in our parables is the coin. And the coin is symbolic of a, uh, is of a person. And on this one, though, what happened to the coin was that it fell on the floor. And so it's a dropped coin, but it symbolizes for you and me falling when we fall when we fail that's a part of backsliding when we come up short when we make mistakes when we fail God and, and if you live for God any length of time you've been there and you fail and failure a lot of times it leads to us being lost the coin fell on the ground, and so it wasn't where it needed to be. It had fallen. Isn't that like you and me? When we fall, we, we're not where we need to be. Some of you right now, you know that you are fallen. You're not where you need to be. You're not in God's hands. You're not right where you should be. You're fallen. You've taken a fall. It could be anything. I don't know what it is, but God knows, and you know, and you know your heart. You're fallen from the place you should be. That's the symbol of the coin. Falling. And if you haven't, you know, if you haven't failed, praise God. But you know what? There's going to be a time, and there are times when we fall. And it's very serious because we get lost when we fall. Oh, how we get lost when we fall. I've seen so many people get lost because of failure and, and they throw in the towel and you know what pastor it's just not worth it and, and then even more when, when they fall multiple times and, and never even realizing that you know what that every time they fall God is still there to pick them up but they're ready to go they're ready to throw in the towel and I say no don't throw in the towel don't quit just because you failed just because you've fallen no that's not what the text says that the person had fallen but, but when they come back it's something else they're found. It talks about a lamp, a lamp. She has to light a lamp so that they can see this is the light. And, and the light of it is Jesus in us and, and his word and the light. We are the light of the world. It can be us when we stop being the light of the world, when we, we, we cover our testimony and we cover and we stop talking about Jesus and we stop living for God the way that we should, we fall in. She had to light a lamp and, and go searching. Why? Because we need light so that we can see. That's how we get lost. And, and it goes dark. And, and now we don't know where we're going because we've fallen. Listen, you got to get the light back. It's a condition. And then the third one is the person who completely rebels and says, You know what? No, later for this, I'm going to do what I want to do, and no one's going to tell me any otherwise. Forget what you have to say, preacher. Forget what the Word of God says. I don't believe it. I'm going my own way. You know what? God has, and, and God has uh, gave us everything in this life to be successful. Now, maybe that's where they are, but you know what happens when you rebel and when you leave God's house? 
A lot of times God allows trouble to come. But you know what? We go out and we seek trouble for ourselves. We go out from the under the covering of God, and now we are in a place where there's trouble. The rebel goes out, and because he's in rebellion mode, he's going to do everything against what his father wants. Isn't that what rebels do in God? They... I'm done with this. You know what? I'm going to go and do everything that I want to do as a sinner. I'm going to go and drink as much beer as I want. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to have sex. I'm going to look at porno. I'm going to watch movies. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to rebel. The problem is that sin has a price. The Bible says plain the wages of sin are death. And as it's fun for a while, eventually, sin leads to problems. I've never seen someone successfully backslide. I've never seen it happen. I'm sure there's people who can backslide and maybe it seems like their lives are better, but you can't be better than when you're living for God. Than when Jesus, the, the light of the world, is in your heart and in your, in your soul and, and the life of the Holy Spirit is working in you there's nothing that can come close to it no matter how much you try to fill yourself with the things of the world entertainment so that's what he does he goes out tries to fill himself with the things of the world only to find that the world leaves you empty it leaves you empty go ahead you know and, and that's what happens and that's what they find out. I can, I can tell you how many times in the, over the time that I've pastored that people have come and they've gone and they've come again and they said, Pastor, I should have never left. Of course you shouldn't have left. I told you you shouldn't have left. Everybody was trying to warn you. God was dealing with your heart and you knew it and you fought against it. And that's where people are tonight. They're fighting against God. They're in rebellion mode. That's the condition of the backsliding heart. And these are three conditions that we see. Losing your way, the sheep falling, the dropped coin, and rebelling, the father's son. Now let's consider these remedies because there is a remedy. And there is help for our backsliding hearts. First one is, you know what? Just stop as a sheep and listen for the shepherd's voice. Stop. Let yourself be found. As a sheep, as, as, if you're a sheep, if you're a lost sheep, let yourself be found. Just stop. And listen for the shepherd's voice. Amen. The Bible tells us, Man shall not live by bread and water alone, but he shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, because he's the shepherd. Jesus said, My words are life. It's his word. It's your Bible, but it's when God speaks to you and you're, you pray. Let yourself be found. And if you've ever been backslidden, and you know, I know for me that, that when my heart gets troubled and you know what, I'm not hearing the Father's voice, that, that the Holy Spirit moves upon me. And I have to stop and listen. Oh, God. Let me get back. Let me get back. Let me hear you, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. And then sometimes you have to cry out, God, speak to me. I need a fresh word from you. I need something fresh my, for my heart because what happened last year, what happened yesterday, it's not enough for today. God, I need you today. The next one is the coin. And that's a simple one, but it's so hard to do for so many people. And you know what? Get up again. But... You've fallen. You've failed. Welcome to the club. This book is filled with people of God who have failed. And God still loves them. Just read the book. You read Hebrews, the heroes of faith. Chapter 11. 
And look at the list that's there. There's prostitutes, there's failures, there's... Uh, it's all there. And yet God chooses them. Why? So that we can be encouraged. Remember, the, the, all, the, all the disciples of Jesus, they fail. There's not one of them... That was gung, that was that stayed there with Jesus, that went through it with Jesus, that was faithful. They all failed. They all fled. They all left. So, some of them went away, never to be seen again. But there were others who, you know, what they got back up. Get back up. Come on, brother, sister, disciple, person in the church. If you're listening and you're backslidden tonight and you know you've fallen you failed you know what just get up again come on let's get up try again dust yourself off the the coin was fe fell and it fall and, and she had to sweep to find it because it was dirty you know you got to dust yourself off you got to get up you got to get it you got to let God help you and and get up the last one is and my favorite returning home Returning home, there's no place like being right with God. There's nothing that compares to being right with God when your heart is right with God and you're right with all the people around you. There is nothing better. There's nothing better. The sun goes, and it's such a famous story, and I, I wish you would just memorize it. Let it speak to your heart. He goes, he rebels. He has it his way, only to find out that the Father's way was much better. How many know God's way is so much better? God's way is the best way. Let's throw out our plans and our way, and God, let me do it your way. And he sees it, and the Bible tells us that he comes to his senses, another translation says, he comes to his senses and he says, you know what? This is not all that it seemed to be. That's what happened to me when I was a youngster. When I first got saved and I had a quarter pound of weed in my bedroom. I had a, a fridge full of beer. I had money in my pocket and, you know, all the fun to be had. And I came to my senses and I realized there has to be more to life than this. There has to be more to life than pleasure and lust and having things and having fun trying you know I don't whatever it is different kinds of beer or different kinds of you know uh, of drugs right it was the, for me it was all about the different kinds of pot and then you know the blueberry and the strawberry and you know whatever else there was and it was just re it, it's just so dumb because after it's all said and done you realize that it's empty it's empty. It's an empty life. Sin leaves you empty. And that's where he finds himself. He's empty. And so he comes to his senses. You know what? I didn't have this. But when I was at my father's house, I, I seemed to be, I was fooled, man. My heart was full. There were people who cared about me. My heart, and there was food to eat. I'm going to go back home. Get, go back home. Get back home. Return home, backslider. Go back to the Father's house. Go back to the Father. And because the story, the way that it ends, it's so wonderful. The scripture tells us that with the sheep, once the sheep is found, that the shepherd picks it up and puts it on his shoulders. And, and he comes home with it and, and, and he's celebrating and showing his friend that I found my sheep, man, it's my lost sheep. And, 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 that, and then Jesus flips it and he says, you know what, God, there's, there's, there's joy in heaven over one sinner who returns. Then, there's God is happy about this. See, the devil is a liar because he says, you know what, you, you're just going to do it again. You're, you're whatever, you know, don't worry about it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. All you're going to do is get lost again. And, and But God says, you know what, no, you come back to me, then that makes me happy. 
It makes God happy when, when we let ourselves be found as the sheep that lose our way. It makes God happy. He picks us up, puts us on his shoulders and returns home. The lost coin, when she finds it and she sees it and she picks it up and she rejoices with her friends, that's what God does when, when finally we, we let the light show us where we are and God can pick us up and bring us where we need to be. God rejoices and the Son, this is my favorite because the Father was out looking for Him. He was waiting for Him. He didn't know, who knows how long he was gone. It could have been weeks, months, or even years. But it seems to me that, that every day the Father was waiting for his return. Amen. Listen, God, God is waiting and God is looking for his, our return when we come back. And he rejoices. He rejoices. We think that God's going to... Uh, you know, squash us and, and we get a warped image of God, but Jesus is revealing it to us. No, no, when you turn and you repent and you get back to God, God is rejoicing and He wants to embrace you because He loves you. He died for you. There's rejoicing in heaven. And there's rejoicing and you get to be a part and I get to be a part of that rejoicing. And so... I'm just telling you tonight, whether you lost your way, whether you failed, or you know what, you're in rebelling, but you, you're, you're realizing that it's empty. As soon as you get humble, one of my favorite stories is when the sinner, the tax collector, goes to pray, and then there's the religious man who goes to pray. And the religious man prays his prayer that he's so awesome and so wonderful, but the sinner goes and just, God, be merciful to me. And Jesus says, you know what? You know who went home justified and helped of God? The sinner immediately. Immediately. Immediately, as soon as you turn, as soon as you begin to mouth the words of prayer, God, I need you. God, come to me. Listen, God is waiting to hear, and he's going to rush right in. That's what he's telling us. God is waiting for us, and he's waiting for you. As soon as you mouth the words, God, come. Jesus, come into my heart. God, do something in me. Listen, God is waiting. And the Bible says that he rejoices when we turn to him. So I want to encourage you tonight, maybe after this, you begin to mouth some words of prayer, oh God, maybe something is lost within your heart, God, that something is lost, God, I need the fire, God, come, God, Holy Spirit, come, invade me. Maybe you're realizing that doing things your own way, it just doesn't work. It will never work. As soon as you turn back, the Father is waiting, looking for you, waiting for you to return. So I say, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go home. Go home and let God heal you and let God help you. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father God, I thank you tonight for your word and for the hope that we find from the words of Jesus tonight who you are, God, I'm asking, God, that everyone who would hear, God, and who would listen tonight, God, that they turn to you, God, even as soon as this is over, God, or even right now, God, they begin to mouth the words, God, come into my heart, and that they would begin to talk to you and speak to you. God, because you're what we need, Lord. If Jesus, it's our relationship with you, God. That's what this is all about. I'm asking you to help us tonight, God. Give us help. Give us strength through the Holy Spirit. We need you tonight. Give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Let God help you.